Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome each one of you to Blessing Holy Fire Church. We love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. We ask God to touch you. So, my friend, lift up your heart, lift up your hands, let's welcome the Holy Spirit and our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord hear you from inside out. May the Lord answer you. There are many, many people going through warfare you've never seen it before. I want you to know that you are not alone. And God is able to solve all your problems and he will do it. Just don't give up. This week I met with a wonderful prayer warrior, good, wonderful brother. I asked him, brother, I haven't seen you for a while. How are you doing? Uh, he says, while well, I'm going through, there are no words. I say, my brother, don't worry. You're not the only one. Myself, I'm going through something. And my brother said, pastor, for me, I'm not just going through something. I'm going through things. So these are the days of the final battle. These are the day where we see wickedness we never seen before. This morning, I don't know if you saw in the news, they were talking how in Texas, they found six cows. And the tongue was cut out. There was no blood. There was nothing showing like, uh, you know, the footprint of somebody. And just the number six, it shows you something. We all know 666 is going to come. So that shows you we are living like the days of Noah. Where the Bible says there was wickedness all over the world. That is the world we are living in. But we're going to look up and we're going to continue to trust God and we're going to be righteous. Amen? Amen. Today the Lord gave, you, gave me a wonderful message and the message is like, do you have a hard time saying sorry? Do you have a hard time apologizing? God is going to help you because a place where you can, I apologize, I am sorry, it's not a good place. It's not a place for a believer. The Lord spoke to me, he said, it's a dangerous zone. A dangerous, a dangerous red hot zone. It's a place where you do not want to be. Have you seen people who wrong you? Or maybe you have done it yourself. But then they move on like, hello, how are you? Well, I was hoping that you can apologize, but they don't do it. Or you have seen it where somebody does it, and they say, no, not me, I didn't do it. Where you drank that juice, didn't you? That juice that was meant for the baby. Uh, it might not make sense in America, but in Africa, 
when the food is ready, a long, long time ago when they leave you the food for the baby, ah, the baby get the food that nobody else get in the house. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take a little bit. A couple of spoons is not going to hurt. And when the mother gets home, he says, did you eat the baby's food? No, 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 not me. I didn't do it. The Lord is telling us that's not a good place to stand. A place where you don't see your sin. When you have a headache, you know that you have a headache, right? When your stomach is hurting, you feel the pain you know. And because you know, you go to the doctor and they give you medication, you're healed. What if you did not know and you're sick? What will happen? People will die. But what about spiritually? When you have a sin, God wants you to recognize that sin. Then you can apologize. And when you apologize, that's when you receive forgiveness. Forgiveness is never given where people did not say, I am sorry for my sin. Forgiveness is something God gives you when, number one, you forgive others and you forgive yourself. We're going to look at that in the depth. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. And we are, we are going to look at a couple of verses. Look eight. There is a story of a woman who was healed with the issue of the blood. The Bible tells us that Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter. On the way, there is a crowd of people and everybody wants to touch Jesus. Everybody is pressing to get as much close as possible. You can imagine. Can you imagine if you see somebody famous walking down the town you're there? Many people will run and will, uh, you know, say hello, uh, you know, if they are able, but if they can't, they always want to touch, take a picture. I have done it. So, in the middle of the pressing against Jesus, Jesus is saying, who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. I do believe that there are many people who try to touch Jesus. But many wanted to touch just for fame or maybe for curiosity. Uh, but there was one who, who said, if I only touch him, I'll be well. So when Jesus said, who touched me? He said, oh, not me, not me. Our children like to do that. But there are even grown-up people, sometimes we do it, we deny. From today forward, God wants you to admit. If you did it, admit it because without confessing it, and you know when you confess, what will he do? He will forgive you. And so everybody denied. Nami, nami. But there was one 
the woman, Jesus said, Someone did touch me. For I was aware that power had gone out of me. God is so powerful that even without looking, he knows who touched him. My brother, my sisters, the Lord is telling us that we can get familiar with the worship and with the prayer, but we can do those things without touching him. He says, when you come, make sure you touch me. Sing the song until you touch him, until you feel him, until you see him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus is so powerful that he always know the one who touch him, even when they touch him from behind. When the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. When you confess it, you say, Lord, I lied to my parents. Oh, Lord, I went where I was not supposed to go. Guess what? The Lord doesn't come and throw stones on you. The Lord doesn't get a spanking spoon and begin to spank you. No, the Lord rejoices. Amen. Because if you did not confess it, you are going to go the wrong way. You, you are going to go to the left. But when you confess it, he responded to you like he responded to the woman. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So God will never, never be angry when you admit. Young children, all of us, when you have lied, just confess it to say, Mom, you know what? I lied. Dad, you know what? I did not tell you the truth, but actually, I touched your car. I drove your car. Things like that. Confess your sins to one another. The Lord is telling us, do not be in denial. You remember Abraham and Sarah. One day, God paid a visit to Abraham, and he said, I will come back next year this time, and your wife will have a child. And Sarah, she heard it, and what did she do? She laughed. She said, oh, will I really be pregnant? Will I have a pleasure? Will, oh, no, I'm so old. I think you're wrong. And God came to Sarah and he said, why did you laugh? Do you remember the response she gave? She said, no, I did not laugh. Oh dear, let's not lie to God. Because he knows everything and he sees everything. She laughed, but she denied it. Sarah represents the human nature. The human nature tended to say, no, I didn't do it. Mom, I didn't do it. But we can see you did it. There are still some cakes on your lips. We can see it. You did it. Oh no, Mama, I didn't do it. Teach your children to confess. Mm. It is dangerous if we don't confess it. Because God does not forgive what we have now confessed. Let's go to John chapter 9. Uh, rather, let's go to Luke chapter 15. Very 
this one now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to him to listen to the word hallelujah both the pharisees and the scribes began to grumble saying this man received the sinners and he eats with them i am grateful that we have a god who welcome sinners that's why when you sin what do you do you go to him when you sin don't go to the world when you sin don't go to the drug dealers when you sin go to jesus hallelujah and then he began to tell them a couple of parables but one of the parables is that how god rejoices when there is a sheep that is lost but he finds it the bible says god leaves 99 sheep that are now lost and he goes after one that is lost beloved the church beloved the family how are we doing it today when somebody sin and delivers how are we going after them to bring them back jesus goes after the lost and that's why we are here today if he did not go after us we will be lost forever so you need to forgive yourself when you sin it's not the end of the world when you sin you need to remember that god is a god of grace and instead of running away from him run it to him and let him take away your sin the world cannot take away your sin man cannot take away your sin but he will take away your sin and then jesus tells us that when he comes home after finding the loss he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them rejoice with me for i have found my sheep which was lost the 99 don't bring him the joy like the one that is lost that he find the patient will say i am sorry i am sorry god i am sorry mommy i'm sorry daddy and the spouse we need to apologize to one another when you say i'm sorry get what the lord rejoices he rejoices verse 7 of Luke 15 it says i tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance did you hear that the lord loves it when we come before him and we kneel before him and we say god i am sorry but we don't say sorry to god only when we do something wrong to our friend we need to go to them and say i am sorry but many people today are not doing it why number one pride pride think that if you say sorry you are a loser but actually when you say sorry you are the greatest like the thumb someone was telling me the other day that when somebody does something wrong 
our sinful nature like to do this. You, 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 you did this, you did that. There's a finger this morning, I was a spanking it. I said, you do not point the finger, you do not blame. And then they say when you point that one finger, three of them are pointing at you. <laughs> because when you judge other people, you see your own faith and you condemn yourself. And then they say, but praise God that the thumb stand up and give glory to God. And because of that, the thumb is the strongest. Hallelujah. You need to treat your thumb well. Amen. Hallelujah. In the same way, the person who calls and apologizes is the strongest. He is the greatest. He is the one who is humble. You want to be humble? You want to walk in humility? Begin to say, I am sorry. The little thing that we do, we step on people's toes. The first thing, I am sorry. It all begins. By saying, I am sorry. Your journey with Christ begin when you say, I'm sorry for my sin. Until you do that, there is no relationship. In verse 10, it also says, in the same way I tell you, there is a joy in the presence of the angels of God. Over one sinner who repents. A sinner who don't repent, they don't bring joy to God. But the one who say, you know what? I did wrong. They bring him a joy. Just like the prodigal son. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? He rebelled. And he asked for his inheritance early. And the father is good. And the father wanted him to learn something. So he gave him the inheritance. And the guy probably bought a new car. And he drove to another city. When he got there, he wasted all his money until the family came. And he, start, he became a homeless. At night, there is nowhere to sleep. When the snow hit, there was no cloth on him and there was no shelter. Well, he held down. He said, no way, I'm not going to bow myself. I, I'm going to take it in. I'm going to endure. But the trials went on and went on until Luke 15 verse 17 but when he came to his senses he said how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread but I am dying here with hunger the pride is broken Okay, can we say together but when he came to his senses. Okay, come on. That's weak. Everybody, let's say. But when he came to his senses. When he came to his senses. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray and I ask God to help every human being on the earth, in every country, every nation, every continent, that they come back to their senses. When you come to your senses, pride falls. But unfortunately, some people do not come to their senses until they are in a trouble. God is always calling us to obey. God is always, ha, 
Hallelujah. Someone is be being delivered from the spirit of a disobedience. Someone, you're being delivered from rebellion. You call yourself a believer, but you have not made the Lord Jesus your Savior and your Lord. When you get saved, Jesus must be your Savior. That means he forgives your sins. But number two, Jesus becomes your Lord. Your Lord means he's your king. When he says, go, you go. When he says, do this, you do it. So, coming back to the senses, when we do not come to obey God, he won't let us go. So he surrender us with trials. And the trials are there to take away your pride. So during the time of trials, your problem will be solved quickly if you let go of your pride. My dear friend, God is showing me that there is so much pride in believers. There is so much pride that even animals don't have. Have you seen a dog with a pride? Okay, tell me, have you seen animals with a pride? Maybe, but not many. <laughs> and God is showing me there is hidden pride in many people. Therefore, we're going to confess pride. Let's say together, Father God, we repent for pride. We repent for hidden pride. Please forgive us and take pride away from us. In Jesus' name, it's done. Pride, you must leave the body of Christ. Pride tells you, do not apologize. Pride tells you, don't say you did it because they will look down on you. Pride tell you, if you say you did it, they will say you are weak. But actually, we saw that the strongest one <laughs> is the one who apologizes. And the one who doesn't apologize, the one who doesn't say sorry, is that person who has pride. So when he came to his senses, he says, how many of my fathers hired men that have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger. So I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, against heaven and in your sight. Now we are going to see what happens when a man says, I am sorry. When they say, I apologize. Did the father get angry? When the son got to cross to home, the father saw him from afar. He runs to meet him. And when he saw him, verse 19, it tells us, uh, 21, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. He didn't go around the bush and say, well, uh, you know, they made me do this. Please, let not justify sin. Let's just say, I am sorry, I did it. I am late, forgive me, I did it. His repentance was genuine. And he did not sugarcoat it. He 
went straight to the point. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Look at that humility that God gives those people who say, I am sorry. God will give you humility. Hallelujah. And he got forgiven. And the father gave him back everything. And he brought joy to the father. But the other one, who was always home, was not happy. You see the joy those two bring to the father? The one who brought most of the joy is the one who said, I am sorry. I am sorry. Hallelujah. So, I am going to read something from my Jewish Bible. I hope it's going to bless you like it blessed me. So, please, let's listen attentively. As we close this message, which we have to have a part to it. This message is a very important because the Lord says, if you do not apologize, if you do not say, I am sorry, you can get in heaven. Because heaven is a place for the repentant ones. Just be meditating upon these things. We are going to talk about sin and forgiveness. Why many scripture proclaim forgiveness of sins? There is an order, a formula to obtain forgiveness. Number one. You must forgive others. There is one precondition without which no amount of repentance can bring forgiveness. Even if you repent a hundred, a thousand times without forgiving, you cannot be forgiven. The Bible says, when we do the Lord's Prayer, forgive our sins in the same manner as we have completely forgiven everyone of everything, big and Small. That is in Matthew 6, 12. The sinner must always forgive everyone of every little thing before God will accept the sinner's repentant heart. Jesus taught this in the Lord's Prayer. In verse 14 and 15, it says, For if you would forgive all other people their transgression, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you will not forgive all other people, 
Neither will your father forgive your sins. Mark 11 25, Colossians 3 13, confirm this as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, you need to forgive yourself. Please focus. As you forgive others, be sure to include yourself among those you forgive. To remember God's great miracle of erasing your sin. You cannot make things right with God until you make things right with everyone. And until you make things right with yourself. There are times we do something wrong and instead of going to the person we wronged, we go to prayer, we pray, we say we're going to make it right with God. No. You can't make it right with God until you make it right with other people you wrong. Do not beat yourself over the past mistakes, but forgive yourself. It is not possible for you to give your love to other people if you do not love yourself. A parent who does not love himself or herself is not able to give love to the spouse or the children. Forgive yourself and love yourself, then with repentance, all of God's love and forgiveness can flow through you. You can read that in Ephesians 5.28. Number three, so we saw number one, forgive others. Number two, forgive yourself. Seek forgiveness from others. That's number three. That's when you go and you say sorry. Jesus said, and I said to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be guilty in the judgment. And whoever would say to his brother, empty-headed, the one is guilty to the Sanhedrin. Whoever would say, stupid, is guilty in the Gehenna of the fire. If therefore you would present your gift at the altar and then you would remember that your brother has something against you you must right away leave your gift there in the front of the altar and go you must first become reconciled with your own brother and then after that you come back and present your gift to God In seeking forgiveness from someone, you are automatically confessing to the person. And if your brother sin against you, you must go. You must show his error, him the error between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if you will not listen to you, you must take with you yet one or two so that by a mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will understand. And if he refuses to listen to them, you must speak at once to the congregation. Then if he refuses to listen to the congregation, he must be to you, even as the hidden 
and the tags collector. Once repented, the sin has been erased by God. That's why it's very important to confess it. Because when you don't confess it, it's not erased. In John chapter 9, Jesus spoke to the Pharisees who said, we are not blind, are we? He spoke to them and he said, because you say you are not blind, your sins remain. Because you say, I didn't do it, your sin remain. Because you don't apologize, your sin remain. After you forgive step number four, repent. Therefore, I shall judge you, O house of Israel, each one according to his way. The word of Adonai, the Lord, repent. Turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. That is in Ezekiel 18.30. The Bible frequently uses the word return to express repentance. Returns is appropriate because repentance requires action. Much more than just regretting something. Repentance is not regretting. It is to have action. Without action, a change in a behavior, there is no true repentance. So the sinner must resolve not to repeat the mistake. Psalm 51 is a good model, prayer of repentance. Okay, let's, uh, then after that, we ask forgiveness from God. God will forgive us, but we need to ask him to forgive us. That's why in our daily prayer, right up front, it says right, uh, right there, forgive our sins. All forgiven sins are then deleted. Oh, hallelujah. They are deleted from God's computer. So that if you go back to the computer, you look at the file, the sin is gone, disappeared. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says, I am, I am he who erases your transgressions for my own sake, and I shall not remember your sins. A rabbi wrote many years ago that the greatest miracle of all happens when a sinner repents. When a sinner repents, God takes that person back in time to when that sin was committed. Only this time, the person doesn't commit the sin. Therefore, the sin was never committed. So, each of us need to know that any remorse over the past sin that we confessed is not from God. Have you ever seen those people who repent and they come back and they say, oh no, I don't think God forgave me. It's the devil usually telling them, 
God did not forgive you because God forgives. So any remorse over the past sin is not from God, but from the accuser. Satan is the one who wants you to wallow in a guilt. God says that any repented sin was never, never committed. Oh, I love this. So I deserved God's forgiveness knowing that you are never again to dwell on that past mistake. The sin has been erased and the sin being erased is the greatest of all miracles. Would you agree? Amen. That all of a sudden, this sin that you had, the stain that was on you, it's no longer on you because of the magic, the miracle of repenting and God forgiving. It's very powerful. When we sin, there is a stand on our heart. There is a stand on our soul. But the moment we repent and we ask God to forgive us, guess what? The stand is gone. And when God looks at you, he doesn't see it. And he cannot even remember ever, ever there was that stand. That's how God loves us. That's how much God loves us. We are going to cross. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes. That we be a people who repent. But why would people not say sorry besides pride? What else? The Lord told me, tell my people to pray that they feel the weight of the sin that is unconfessed, that's on their heart. So, I pray that you will feel how other people feel when you wrong them. We need to have the compassion. We need to know how other people feel about the wrong we do against them. The Lord spoke to me and he said there are people who do wrong and they move on because they lost the feeling of how other people feel. My friend, in this age and in this hour, God wants you, when you meet the poor, feel their needs. When you meet people who are sick, feel what they are going through, that's when then you will get compassion to pray for them. We are living in the age when people are losing the feeling of the pain of others. What causes it? They all say, selfishness. The disease called selfishness. We are a generation that is First thing it is, disease the most. The Lord spoke to me. Selfishness comes 
Because it's all about me. You are always going around yourself. You are always concerned about you. One thing that causes selfishness, young people, all of us here, is electronics. You spend time on my phone, on my phone, on my phone, that you don't even know when your friend comes through the door. You do not even realize when they are leaving. When they are with you, they fall down, they stumble, they hurt, blush gushes out. You can't even tell because you are here. How are you going to get in heaven by being so selfish with this? You have a weapon that can be used for good or for bad. This is the power to take us to heaven or to hell. So please be very careful. Let's stand up. We're going to pray. The Lord is telling us, do not be expert. Knowing other people is a sin. Do not be expert knowing other people is a sin. But he said today, I'm going to call you to have the ability to discern yourself. When you discern yourself rightly, you will come back to your senses. Like the prodigal son, you will say, oh, wow, now I realize. Lord Jesus, we lift up our family members. They might be our children. They might be your spouse. They might be some friends and relatives. And they do not realize. They do not apologize. We must pray for them. Now for the next minute. Bring up their name. It might even be you. There is nothing wrong praying for yourself. So God we pray. That you give us the ability. To discern for ourselves. That when we do wrong. We have no rest. Until the wrong is confessed and we are forgiven. We pray that you visit our children, our spouse, our family member, our friends, our co-worker. Lord, give them the gift to realize. Give them the ability to discern. We ask you, Lord, to move your people from the danger zone, a zone of pride, a zone of selfishness, a zone of not saying sorry, a zone of not apologizing. That's not a place where we are to be. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Oh, Give us, give them the ability to think, to reflect on itself. <laughs> oh, dear Lord Jesus, remove from our middle pointing of our finger that we do not be expert in seeing other people's mistake, but our own sin. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Move upon me. Move upon this congregation. Hallelujah. I would like the congregation, if you can line up here, I'm going to ask Stephen Chantal to pray for you. I'm going to ask them to pray for you that today you receive the gift 
need to realize. Okay, all of you come quick so we get this done very quick. They will say a quick prayer. If you have a problem saying sorry, make your way down here very quick. If you have a problem apologizing, today it's very important that you leave the dangerous zone. Those who are in the zone, they cannot make it to heaven. It doesn't matter even if they go to church. It doesn't matter if they pray. Because heaven is for the forgiven. Heaven is for those who have repented. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's continue to pray. God wants you to drop all your defenses. Justifying yourself and saying, well, I did this, but you know I had to do this. Haven't you heard that every time you justify your sin, your sin grows in your heart. So let go of the fences. Hallelujah. Let's move on and pray for everybody right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christian, let Francois pray for you. Hallelujah. She's gonna pray for you in Kenya Rwanda. Drop your justification. Drop your defenses. Trust God to defend you. Repent for not confessing. Repent for not saying the sorry. Today, do not go back home with a pride. Today, do not go home. The same way you can. Today, realize. Today, today, humble yourself before God and choose to be a man and woman who is quick to apologize. The strongest will even apologize when they did not do it. Just to make peace. Be a peacemaker. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My friend, may God bless you. May God bless you wherever you are. You are free from the spirit. We break its power against you. And we thank the Lord. For breaking every chain of pride, selfishness, not saying sorry. We thank the Lord for doing that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.